Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to go into Galatians, the third chapter, which is a chapter that has uh, always been misused by the Christians, all right? In particular, the um, 28th verse where it speaks of there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond or free, male nor female. You're all one in Yahweh Shah Mashiach, all right? And um, actually, the Apostle Ramlob here in this video, as you can see, uh, the, the page GMS info doc channel 12 I had to finish this video, but it's titled There is neither Jew nor Greek. He went into an uh, in-depth lesson going into why in specific it would say Jew nor Greek All right, why not Jew nor Moab Jew nor Ham Why in specific Jew nor Greek and he goes into that All right, which if you listen to our lessons You should have that understanding, but if you're new all right. Or even if you, you've been around, still look at it because we have to constantly, as the scriptures say in the book of Hebrews, the second chapter, we have to constantly take heed to the things which we have heard unless they slip. All right. Through, through the deceitfulness of sin. So check out this video. Uh, be edified. Um, I'm going to just run through the entire third chapter. Um, Want to get into the habit of, you know, going into particular chapters as well. Um. Also, I want to get into Romans, the fourth chapter, which pretty much coincides uh, with this chapter, because what Christians do is they hijack Abraham and they try to make all right the promise, the promised land and everything that was given unto him, which he passed to Isaac and Jacob. OK. Um, and, and that fell upon the 12 tribes of Israel. They try to take that blessing. They, they blot out Isaac and Jacob and they try to say, well, Abraham's blessing is open unto all nations. All right. And that what the Lord promised this particular seed is no longer void. All right. It's, it's void. It's out of there. OK, which is uh, not in line with the Holy Scriptures. Now, when you get the book of Galatians, all right, this is a letter written to particular Israelites scattered in this particular nation which was a province of the roman empire the fourth beast in daniel the seventh chapter all right that would be ruling in prophecy okay and um what happened is you of course according to the curse we always bring out deuteronomy 28 and 64 where the israelites were promised if they broke that covenant which we did we will be scattered amongst many nations okay and when we went to these many nations, we would serve other gods, idols, all right, which is ultimately when you go into the narrative of the Bible, we've been going through it. That's how we became Gentiles. That's how we became a no people. Pretty much the Lord divorced us because we broke the rules and regulations of that first covenant. All right. Now, um, at the time that Yahweh Shai came on the scene, you had. All right. The Jews are those who were raised in the customs, the circumcision who were on the scene. He gathered. All right. Um, the uh, he gathered a remnant of those, as the scriptures say, the tents of Judah would have to be saved first. Peter, you know, Andrew, uh, uh, Jude, th those particular disciples who followed him and other men who followed him were of the circumcision, meaning they were raised in the customs, all right? But the whole time Yahweh Shai was on the scene, he pretty much was preparing and showing his men that the ones that are going to be down with this message and down with him are going to be the downtrodden, the lame, the halted, the blind, which according to that first covenant were cast out. They couldn't enter into the congregation. So once Yahweh Shai ascended back to the right hand, all right. Eventually, Paul was given the duty to go and teach these particular Israelites. All right. First, it started with Cornelius. Of course, he had to go to Peter. All right. Who's the head of the circumcision? OK. And um, ultimately, salvation 
all right, was opened up to these Israelites who were looked at as castaways. Okay, so when you read Paul's letters, he's writing letters to these churches that were set up. Okay, where you had both Jews and Gentiles. All right, when it says Jews and Gentiles, you have the circumcision, those who were raised in the customs. And then you have the uncircumcision, those who weren't raised in the customs. But the thing they had in common is that they believed on Yahawashai. Whereas a lot of the circumcision rejected Yahawashai, but a lot of them followed him as well. All right, you have this narrative pushed by the Christian church that all of the Jews denied Yahawashai. Okay, so ultimately Israel was cast out and everything was opened up to the Gentiles. That's not true. Okay, so you'll understand more as I read this letter and first off let's get a uh, a, a quick summary of what the the, the uh, book of galatians is about okay the overview okay this is off of gotquestions.org all right so the purpose of the writing of the book of uh galatians was the churches in galatia were compromised were comprised both of jews and gentile converts Convert to who? Belief in Yahawashai. All right. And we know in the scriptures, there's two kind of Gentiles. You have the natural Gentiles, which are the heathen. All right. The other nations. And then you have the Israelites who were scattered amongst them and learned their works and became Gentiles. However, once they started to, you know, hear the message of Yahawashai and the, the preaching of Yahawashai. All right. They were brought back in through faith. Contrary to being brought in by that first covenant or being justified because you were a Jew or raised in the customs and that was the controversy it says Paul's purpose in writing these uh, to these churches was to confirm them in the faith especially concerning justification by faith alone all right apart from the works of the law now we know in the book of James it says faith without works is dead all right but the the controversy that was going around was that is faith in Yahawashai alone enough for salvation to bring you back to the Father? And yes, it is. But through faith, of course, all right, you will keep the laws, all right? But the, 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 the controversy, as you all you know, know if you've been watching our videos, is that those of the circumcision who were raised in the customs who rejected Yahawashai, you know, they pretty much were like, hell no. They had a hard time accepting these castaways okay and they were very serious about the temple they were very very serious about that first covenant but we already broke that first covenant all right as a matter of fact let's get the scripture real quick in uh john the first chapter let's see here let's see here John 1 and 17 for the law was given by Moses that first covenant was given by Moses but grace and truth came by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach and we had already broke that first covenant however there was still a remnant of the Jews Judah Benjamin and Levi all right in Judea you know who were raised in the customs all right and their mindset was still you know, pretty much everything has to be done according to the law of Moses, the law of Moses, the technicalities of the law of Moses, which the law is not done away with. All right. But keeping those laws and, and, and sticking to those traditions and technicalities is not going to grant you salvation. All right. Now, going back here, it says Galatians was written because the churches of that region were facing theological a theological crisis the essential truth of justification by faith rather than human works was being denied by the judaizers now who are the judaizers okay the judaizers were ultimately J israelites the jews who were raised in the customs okay pretty much they based everything on that first covenant which we break all right. So what they were doing was they were going around to these particular churches. The same thing happened in the book of Acts, the 15th chapter. 
they were going around, you know, harassing, all right, the uh, Gentile converts, the Israelites who were leaving those idols behind. They were harassing them, saying that except they be circumcised after the manner of Moses, all right, with the physical circumcision of the penis, all right, uh, 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 and stick to the, the strict to traditions and technicalities of that first covenant, which Yahweh Shai redeemed us from the curse that came with breaking particular laws, all right, and technicalities of that first covenant. But they were going around telling these particular converts that, look, and, and unless you be, all right, keep the laws perfectly, you can't be saved, all right? <laughs> here you go right here. You can just read it. A Judaizer taught that in order for a Christian or a follower of Yahweh Shah to be right with the Most High, he must conform to the Mosaic law. Now, we always ask this question. Understanding that first covenant, knowing that it was for the Israelites, why would those who were hardcore about that first covenant try to add actual heathen in? No, they, they understand that these are Israelites. Okay? That first covenant... All right, the laws that were given unto Mo the Mosaic law, that covenant was made with who? As a matter of fact, let's pull it up here in Exodus, the uh, 24th chapter, okay? And we bring out these points all the time, but the people affirmed their covenant with God, okay? It was, it was, this was to the Israelites, okay? That no other nation was a part of this covenant, Okay? Yes, a mixed multitude came out of Egypt with the Israelites, but they were not under this covenant. Okay? They weren't under this covenant. This covenant was only for the Israelites. Okay? The children of Israel. And he took the, verse 7, he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, all that Yahweh said we will do and uh, we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people. No heathen received the sprinkling of this blood. It was all Israel. And said, "Behold, the blood of the covenant which Yahweh have made with you concerning all these words." Okay, and the God of Israel. This is for the children of Israel. You can see that. Okay. Now, going back here. As we're reading this uh, this summary, all right, the Judaizers taught that ultimately, you know, if you <laughs> weren't going by that covenant, you can't get right with the Most High, meaning Yahweh Shai doesn't have the right to justify you or cover your sin. You got to be covered under that blood of that first covenant, okay? And this was causing you know, pretty much friction amongst the church, all right? Just like you can read that counsel in Acts, the 15th chapter, which we always go to, all right? And and when you get Galatians, the second chapter, okay? It says, knowing, Galatians 2 and 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. I Meaning you're not justified by the, 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 the keeping perfectly of that first covenant. First of all, you can't keep it perfect. Second of all, we already broke that covenant. This is why we're under grace to be brought into the new covenant. And that can only be by Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. All right. So knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. All right. And this is why you hear the uh, camps like Sakari say when we bring these things out, you know, uh, we're Christians. You know, y'all sound like the Christians. Well, that's what they called. All right. The, uh, the followers of Yahweh Shai. All right, even in Acts, I believe the 11th chapter, all right, when they were in Antioch, that's what they were being called. They were being uh, ridiculed. Uh, look at those Christians. So the same thing is happening now, okay? And they know damn well we don't teach that you don't have to keep the laws. What we're saying is that you're not justified by the law. You can't overburden brothers and sisters with every technicality of that first covenant, all right? You can't. You just can't. All right. We're, we're under liberty. We're under grace. OK, now under this grace period. All right. You keep the laws. All right. To the best of your ability. All right. But when we get into arguments over these little technicalities and this and that, 
it becomes unfruitful and you could choke a believer out. All right. Now, of course, you're not walking around eating shellfish, catfish, shrimp being a, you know, a, a, a alphabet. And then saying, well, I'm justified by you. How I know that's not what we're teaching? Now, as a matter of fact, it says. Knowing that no man is justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yahweh Shai, even we have believed in Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, that we might be justified by the faith of Hamashiach and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So you're not going to be justified. You know, the Lord ain't going to pull you, you know, to the forefront and say, look, this guy kept every technicality of that first covenant. So he's justified. That agreement is done away with we broke it already you see it says but if while we seek to be justified by Hamashiach we all we ourselves are also found sinners so if you just say well you know hey well I'm, I'm covered under the blood of Jesus as these Christians say and that you can do whatever the hell you want to do all right then ultimately you 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 you're going to be found a sinner and that's not at all what Paul or any or us or any other disciples were teaching these Gentile converts that they can be sinners. As a matter of fact, when you get the council in Acts the 15 chapter, all right, when it came to the point where we couldn't overburden newcomers with every technicality of the law or what happened to be circumcised in order for the Holy Spirit, all right, to be received, okay, they, they gave them an outline of the laws that they keep until their faith would be built up. All right. Showing you that these were Israelites from among the heathen who had ultimately turned to the most high. It says, is therefore Hamashiach, the minister of sin, God forbid, if for if I build again the things which are destroyed. So if you were worshiping idols and then you say, well, I'm covered under Yahweh, I can keep worshiping idols. I make myself a transgressor. All right. And you don't want to be that sin is the transgression of the law. OK, so the, the book of Galatians was written because you had these particular Judaizers. All right. Or Jews who were raised in the customs who insisted that the followers of Yahweh Shai keep the Mosaic law. All right. Now, understanding that the Mosaic law was only given unto the Israelites. How then would these men all right, have the mindset to add actual heathen under that covenant? If that covenant was only for Israelites, you have to ask yourself that it doesn't make sense. OK, the first and second covenant were only to the Israelites. OK. It's basically you have to follow the law of Moses in order to be right or to be a true follower of Yahweh Shai. We have that same argument today. It says when Paul learned this. All right. Uh, th that this hearsay was being taught to the Galatian churches, he composed an epistle to emphasize our liberty in Hamashiach and to counter the perversion of the gospel that the Judaizers promoted. All right, and Judaizers, Judeans, all right, the Jews. All right, when you look that up real quick, because um, even, you know, it was so much friction that Peter, you know, got simple. You know, and Paul had to curse him out. You know, they had an argument because he would be chilling with the Gentiles. But when other Jews came around, you know, he, he would he would uh, pretty much, you know, he would act funny with him. But the, the word for Judaizers or Jews, OK. Let's just go to it real quick. It's Yahweh in the in the in the Hebrew. All right. But it says to adopt Jewish customs, rights imitate the Jews one who observes the, the the ritual laws of the Jews when you go to the uh, root Eudas is you know Yahweh ultimately the Jews belonging to the Jewish nations Jews as respect uh, uh, respects of birth origin or religion so you had those who were raised in the customs and you had those who weren't those were the wild all right, uh, uh, branches, the wild olive tree, those who weren't raised in the customs. Then you had the natural branches, which were those who were. OK, so when we get Galatians, the third chapter, understanding that history. Um, 
now you you can have sort of an understanding of what's being said you know and any questions put them on a comment board so it says galatians the third chapter in the first verse it says oh foolish galatians he's speaking to that church he's 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 calling them foolish why because a lot of them had started to believe that that uh crap that was being taught by the 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 the, the circumcision the jews the judaizers they started to you know fall into that mindset and get into that over righteous you know spirit okay oh foolish galatians who had bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Shai hamashiach had evidently set forth crucified among you okay because ultimately if you're claiming that you can be justified by keeping that first covenant then hamashiach's crucifixion all right, means nothing to you. Okay, that's a very dangerous mindset. All right, it says, This only what I learn of you. All right, receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. All right, let's read this in the NLT. We're going to read a few of these scriptures in the NLT as well. He says, Let me ask you one question Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Spirit because. You believe the message you heard about Hamashiach. And as for all of us Israelites who are listening to this video, who, who, who believe in the truth or follow a particular camp, all right, we were not keeping the laws perfectly when the Heavenly Father allowed the Holy Spirit to enter into our minds and turn back to him. See, that's the point. We were in a, in a Gentile state of mind, just like Abraham, uncircumcised. We were uncircumcised in spirit and some of us physically, we didn't even understand the importance of it. Those of us who even were circumcised, we didn't get, you know, what that meant. Okay. So was it, was it you hearing Deuteronomy 28 and 68? You hearing, you know, about how Yahweh Shai died for the nation of Israel only. Okay. Uh, 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 you know, the prophecies and everything else. Did that bring you into the truth or was it the works of the law that made you come into this truth all right and the true answer is ultimately it was by the hearing of faith we believed what we heard it, it sparked you know the holy spirit sparked our interest it had nothing to do with the keeping of the law all right now as we heard the word of course you know we started to say well let me keep the sabbath you know let me i gotta stop eating this i gotta stop eating that and we grew all right. It says, are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit? All right. Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? All right. Read that in the NLT. <clears throat> How foolish can you be after st starting to follow Yahweh Shai and changing your lives? All right. Starting your Christian lives in the spirit. All right. Why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? See, and none of us could do that at the end of the day. Let's just be honest. But you have men who believe and even teach that they're perfect in the law. You know, so the thing is, the danger of that is when Yahweh Shai returns, let's say he does judge you by that law, because ultimately we want to be covered under the blood of Yahweh Shai. As a matter of fact, when uh, let's get uh, Psalms, the 32nd chapter. Okay, Psalms, the 32nd chapter, in the first verse, this is David, and we want the mercies of David. That's what that's all about. The mercies of David is ultimately your sins being covered because we had sins even before we knew the truth that the Lord could account to us. He could, he could hold us accountable for those sins. We have sins that we do while we're in the truth, and if you're honest with yourself, you know that. But if you want to present this high-minded, perfect Israelite you know, a, a viewpoint of yourself, then, you know, you're going to say, well, I don't sin. All right. Now, of course, the elect who were chosen from the foundation of the earth in spirit, they don't. All right. But in this flesh, we have all kinds of sins, man. And we don't know if we're a part of that number. OK, so it says blessed is the man who blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sins is covered. That's only under Yahweh Shai. And uh, David's sins were covered, all right? And the Heavenly Father had mercy on him through who? Solomon, who built the temple in his stead, 
and forwarded the throne of David for 40 years. Yahweh Shah is going to do that eternally, and he is now building a spiritual temple. So it says, Blessed is the man unto whom Yahweh imputed not iniquity, and in whom spirit there is no gal. Okay? And in whose spirit there is no gal. Okay? As it says about the 144, in their mouth was found no gal. So the, 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 the elect are perfect. However, in, in, in the flesh, they need to what? They need, they need covering. And that's only under Yahweh Shah because let's get Psalms 130. Psalms 130 and 3. <laughs> let's start at 2. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. All right. Because as, as David said in Psalms 51, the, you don't require sacrifice or else I would have gave it. All right. You require a broken and contrite spirit. OK. And that's what we want to have. Even when we go, we want to feel you, know, you want to feel bad about sin, about going off, about missing the mark. However, you do need a covering for the sins before and you learn the truth and the sins after you learn the truth. You need covering even wicked thoughts of sins. OK. And we're living in Babylon the Great. Everything pretty much is set up for us to go off. All right. The flesh condemns us and the system we live in. It will be a constant accusation against us if we didn't have covering under Yahweh Shai's blood. So hear the voice of my supplications. If thou, Yahweh, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? So if the Lord marked our iniquities. All right. Let's uh, read it in NLT. Lord, if you kept the record of our sins, who could ever survive? Well, according to a lot of you Israelite camps, some of you could, but we know we wouldn't. All right. So, but there is a forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. And that's under Yahweh Shai. All right. And once you understand and know that to have this, this high minded attitude about you can save yourself through keeping the laws or, or, or ultimately you want to enter back under that first covenant, you're crazy. Okay. So. Let's read 3 and 3 again. Galatians 3 and 3. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Okay. Have ye suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain. Okay. NLT. You know, uh, it's good to read a lot of Paul's letters, you know, uh, in the NLT as well. Because the old English and the way it's written, it, it can be a stump. Even Peter said his, his letters are, are hard to be understood. This is why you have particular Israelite camps saying that uh, his, his, he's not the word of God, Paul. Okay, NLT says, have you experienced so uh, much for nothing? Surely it was not in vain, was it? You know, turning from all of those idols, you know, uh, uh, toiling, you know, to you know, uh, uh, coming to the faith. Was it in vain? He's asking. All right. It says, he therefore that ministered to you the spirit and the works of of miracles among you doeth he by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith all right so you know the brothers you see around you you know are they were all miracles okay literally uh, uh you know the apostles the elders to have continued you know as as long as they continue was it by them keeping the laws perfectly that they're still here teaching no it was by what faith the, the works of faith the spirit did that OK, because the Heavenly Father through Yahweh Shai, all right, said he was going to send us teachers. That wasn't uh, uh, because of that first covenant. That was a free will offering from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That was a gift. OK, and back then they had men working miracles amongst them. It wasn't because of the first covenant. It was because the Heavenly Father put the spirit on them. OK, did he do it by the works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith, it's by the hearing of faith. Did you get to the point you are now as an Israelite by keeping the laws perfectly? Okay, or or or, or you heard and believed. It says, even as Abraham believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness. So see here, what Christians do is they try to hijack Abraham, and they want to open up this blessing that was given unto him. 
okay, to all nations. And that's just not true. That promised land is given unto the Israelites, okay? The land that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the remnant are being restored to be heirs to that promise. As a matter of fact, when you get uh, Ezekiel 37, all right? Ezekiel 37, just get to the point. Reunion of Judah and Israel, okay? All 12 tribes, Tabernacle of David. But what's the point? Let's see here. Yep. Let's see here. Yep. And I'll uh, start at 24. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. All right. And they shall have one shepherd, the tabernacle of David, the throne of David being established in the earth. That's the kingdom. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statues and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. All right. And that was passed down from Abraham to Isaac unto Jacob. That land is the land we're going to return to wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be prince over them. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. The law, statutes, commandments written in our inward part and i will uh, place them and multiply them and set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore we will be the temple okay so th that's th that's the uh the, the 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 promise that was promised to abraham was given unto isaac and then jacob all right but it all started with abraham's belief now abraham belonged to a particular family line that goes back to adam okay through seth Okay, through uh, Noah, through Shem. And when you get Genesis, the 11th chapter, I'm not I'll always going to it, so I'm not going to go into it. But you'll notice after the Tower of Babel, when all the languages were confounded, it goes directly into the descendants of Shem, who had our facts at. And you'll see Eber, which is the word Hebrew, brought up. Okay, and then as you go down through this family line that go comes from Shem, you're going to see Abram. Abram belonged to this particular family line. It's just that when he was on the scene, when he was young, okay, his father didn't raise him up according to the customs that he belonged to. As we weren't raised up according to the customs we belonged to. All right. But as he was awakened, he separated from his family, just like we have. And he was restored. All right. And he, he called on the name of the Lord and he kept the laws. That's the story. All right. Matter of fact, he's known as a Hebrew. Okay? He's known as a Hebrew. When you get, uh, let's see, it should be like Genesis 12. Yep, Genesis 14 and 13. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew. Okay? And that's proof he belongs to this family line because that term Hebrew goes back in this chapter up to Ibar, Eber. Okay, Salah lived uh, uh, 30 years and begot Eber. Okay, Eber is where Ibar is where you get that term Hebrew. All right, so Abraham belonged to a particular family line. Okay, and this is how we're connected all the way back to Adam. All right, through Seth, <laughs> through Noah, through Shem. Ibar, Hebrew, all right, Eber, Heber, the region beyond, so forth. That's the same word. OK, that you're going to see used in um, Genesis, the uh, 14th chapter, as we just read. Hebrew. OK, so that's showing you. <clears throat> that's showing you that Abraham belonged to a particular family line. So when he believed. OK, he, he came out and he was uncircumcised and he came out of that uncircumcised state as we have. See, but he still belonged to a particular line and the promise and the priesthood and everything else was still associated and synonymous with that line. So you Christians can't uh, hijack Abraham and you damn sure can't cut out Isaac and Jacob in the 12 tribes. So even as Abraham, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. 
Know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. So what Christians are trying to do, okay, is they're trying to take away Isaac and Jacob. All we have to do is just type in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you, you can just look it up. You see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Exodus 2 and 24, and God hearing their groaning, speaking of the Israelites in Egypt, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob. All right, that we were going to be, uh, uh, air, uh, we were going to receive a particular land. All right. And we were trying to enter into it <laughs> under that, you know, at that time, but eventually we messed up. But, you know, you can look at various other scriptures to see some in the New Testament. Okay. Acts 3 and 13, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers have glorified his son, Yahweh Shai, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate. All right. See, they're speaking to the Jews who denied him. All right. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. OK. Acts 7 and 8. And he gave unto him the covenant of circumcision. OK which is different from the covenant of promise. Okay. It says, and so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac begot Jacob and Jacob begot 12 patriarchs. That's the narrative of the Bible. Okay. The promise of the 12 tribes, which Paul even says, let's get that real quick. I believe it's the book of Acts, the 24th chapter. He, he wants that promise to come to pass. Okay. Acts 26 and 6. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers. On which promise our 12 tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come. For which hope sake Agrippa I am accused of the Jews. And they wanted to put Paul to death because he was an apostle to the uncircumcision. Which are Israelites. All right, who were coming out of that Gentile state of mind, putting the idols down. So even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness, okay, Abraham wasn't keeping the laws perfectly at first, but his belief is what, you know, ultimately accounted him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of the faith are the same are the children of Abraham, but it still goes through Isaac and Jacob, man. Okay, and we'll prove it. It says in the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed because what all nations. All right. The, the Israelites have been scattered amongst all nations. Remember. Okay. Deuteronomy. 28. 64. Okay. The Lord shall scatter thee among all people and from one end of the earth to another. And there shall thou serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Among these nations, among these nations. All right. These are Israelites among these nations that Paul are speaking to is speaking to. OK, who are turning from this idols, which is why he says ye were Gentiles led away of these dumb idols okay which you were following after okay just like abraham he was following idols because it was taught to him of his father the book of joshua tells you terah abraham's father was an idol worshiper so the gentiles are linked to abraham because what just as they were in an uncircumcised state following after other gods their belief on hearing a word justified them. Just like Abraham's belief is what justified him, but it does not take away all right, from the fact he belonged to a particular lineage. Okay? He was not justified by the keeping of the laws. Now, did he eventually keep the laws? Absolutely. All right? Because remember, the laws were before... Uh, 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 Moses wrote them on stone There was still laws Remember Adam received the laws Okay But they were oral They weren't written down Okay So 
going back here all right and it says heathen okay god will justify the heathen let's get the book of uh to show you something real quick the book of um second edras the second chapter Yep, let them be scattered abroad amongst the heathen. Let their names be put out of the earth, for they have despised my covenant. That's what happened to the Israelites. And as we went amongst the heathen, what did we do? We profaned the name of the Lord. We followed after their works. Now here it says in verse 28, the heathen shall envy thee and shall be do nothing against thee. But here in verse 34, it says, and therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen that hear and understand, okay, Look for your shepherd, and he shall give you rest, for he is nigh at hand that shall come in the end of the world. So there's two kinds of heathen. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's go here to, uh, back to Galatians 2. There's a lot that needs to be explained, all right? Back to uh, Galatians, the second chapter. All right, because the whole Bible is about one particular family line going from Adam all the way through Seth, through Noah, through Shem, through Abraham, who had Isaac and Jacob, 12 tribes. All right. But they want you to believe that none of that history matters. And that now when you read the New Testament, that particular family line. OK, uh, uh, the, the, the Bible is no longer exclusively about them. This is Galatians chapter two and seven. This is Paul speaking, it says, but contrary wise. When they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision, those who weren't raised in the laws, was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision, those who were raised in the laws, was committed unto Peter. Peter was raised in the laws. Remember, he told Yahweh himself when he thought the vision of the unclean beast scattered on the net meant to eat it. He said, look, I haven't eaten anything that was ever common or unclean. Pretty much he was raised in the laws. Okay. But Paul was sent to teach those who weren't raised in the laws. Why? Because he knew he knew Greek, he knew Latin, he knew Hebrew. OK, now remember, Paul was raised in the laws. Paul was a circumcised Israelite. He was raised in the custom of the laws and he persecuted the church before he was knocked off of his high horse. He was on that mindset that you had to be, you know, uh, uh, circumcised after the manner of Moses for the Lord to be dealing with you. Verse, tw verse 8 says, For he that wrought effectually in Peter the apostleship of circumcision, the same was mighty in me, all right, towards the Gentiles. All right? It says, And when Cephas, James, and John, who seemed to be pillars in the church, perceived that grace was given unto me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that they we should go into the heathen and they unto the circumcision. So the heathen... So you can see here are the uncircumcised, all right? And when you look up uncircumcised, so clearly the uncircumcision that Paul was, was given the, the, the order to go and teach are known as the heathen. See that? It's the same thing. Now, when you go, first of all, let's get Romans 2 and 25. Romans 2 and 25 for circumcision verily profit it if thou keep the law but if thou be a breaker of the law thy circumcision is made uncircumcision that's why those Israelites were being called uncircumcision as it says in Ephesians the second chapter you were called uncircumcision by that which is the circumcision you will look down upon when you look up this word uncircumcision The reason it's attributed unto a heathen because to not be circumcised is a heathenistic custom. Remember in the book of First Maccabees, okay, Israel made themselves uncircumcised. Okay? As a matter of fact, in First Maccabees, Wicked men out of Israel did what? Verse 15, and they made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves unto the heathen. See that? 
and were sold to do mischief. So they became heathen in their works, but they're still Israelites. The word uncircumcision. Strong's G203, Akrabustia. Akrabustia. Okay. Having the foreskin uncircumcised, a Gentile, a condition in which the corrupt desires rooted in the flesh were not yet extinct. So you, you pretty pretty much you were a heathen, following idols, okay, doing uh, wickedness, man. As a matter of fact, <laughs> Second Corinthians six goes into it. What were those Gentiles doing? Let's see here. Let's see here. Oh, 1 Corinthians 6. So lock it. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, as such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are ju all justified in the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Because according to that first covenant, if you did these things, there was a curse that came away with it. See, you were cursed if you didn't. If you did these things under that first covenant, you were cursed. There was no way back, even put to death. But through Yahweh Shai, you are washed, showing you these are Israelites because under that first covenant, they are the ones who were sinners uh, uh, by doing these works. The actual heathen were never under that covenant, so they couldn't be found sinners under that covenant. Now, do they sin? Are the acts they do sin? Yes, they were. But the thing is, they were not in covenant agreement with the Most High. All right. Or under the curse, which came with breaking those laws. So what Yahweh Shai did was he washed us, he washed those, and now they can have a clean slate and ultimately be justified by faith. The thing is, those of the circumcision were looking at them like, hell nah. Look at what they were doing. They were drunkard, they were effeminate, meaning some of them were home, uh, the alphabets. Okay, abusing themselves with mankind, who knows what, you know, because all you had to do was go back to the acts of the ancient Roman Empire. And what, what, what were they doing? Jake was doing exactly that. I mean, they were nasty. Even here in America, nasty. Okay? <laughs> so, as such were some of you. Remember. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 2. Know ye that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Were Gentiles. Ye were Gentiles. Ye were heathen. Ye were called the uncircumcision, but through Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, you can be brought back in. So let's go back to Galatian. All right, and read 7 and 8 again. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith all right, grafted back in through faith, justified by faith. The same are the children of Abraham because you're doing the works of Abraham. OK. In the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. Preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying in thee, all nations shall be blessed. And it starts with the Israelites scattered amongst the nations. All right. But as the scriptures say, once we get into the kingdom. All right. Blessed are they that bless thee. All right. Although the heathen will never, you know, uh, receive of the covenant, they won't have the laws written in them or they'll be under us. If they uh, uh, listen and obey, they will be blessed in the kingdom. All right. But they will never be blessed with being the chosen seed of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. OK. It says so. Then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. See, what Christians like to do is hijack these terms, all right, as if Abraham himself didn't come from a specific family line, the sons of God, which were eventually called Israelites at the time of Jacob. 
Okay, they try to hijack Abraham and leave Isaac and Jacob out of it. Remember, all right, at the time that Abraham was looking for an heir to the promise that was given unto him, what did the Lord tell him? All right, that through Isaac, I'm going to continue and, and, and land that blessing on. See, Abraham wanted it to be Ishmael. All right, but we'll get into that in just a minute. So those who are blessed or of the faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Okay. Verse 10, for as many as are under the works of the law are under the curse. Okay. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Who was that talk, uh, uh, told to? That was told to the Israelites. It was the Israelites who were cursed if they didn't keep that covenant and they didn't keep it and they are cursed but under Yahweh Shai you have a way back now we're still under the curses okay but you're redeemed from the curse of the law okay we didn't celebrate the Passover some of us work on the Sabbath under that first covenant if you worked or did any work on the Sabbath you were put to death okay <laughs> you were put to death so if you're if you're under the, the works of the law, meaning if you're trying to be justified by that first covenant, OK, then you are under the curse because that is it is written. Cursed is everyone that continue it not in all the things which are written in this law, that covenant that Israel agreed to. OK. Let's get that. Let's get one precept. All right. Deuteronomy 29 and 20 the Lord will not spare him but then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven so those of the circumcision were looking at those Israelites who were in that idol worship and they were looking at them as if they were blotted out there are no people see Deuteronomy 27 and 26. Cursed is he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them, and the people shall say, Iman. Jeremiah 11 and 3. And say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant. You see that? So, if you want to be justified by that covenant, you are under the curses of that covenant with the, the curses which came with breaking that 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 the laws in that covenant so let's read this in the nlt okay but those who depend on the law to make them right with god are under his curse for the scriptures say cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all the commandments that are written in god's all right law point blank period okay so good luck when Yahweh Shah returns being judged by that first covenant, if that's what you want. See, we want our sins to be covered, blotted out. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident the just shall live by faith. All right. And Abraham is a perfect example of that. He wasn't justified because he kept the law perfectly. He was justified because he believed and he was in an uncircumcised state. All right. It says, so to say, the only way you can get the Holy Spirit or be right with the Most High is if you're circumcised is not true. All right. And that's th that those were some of the arguments right now. You have brothers who went and got circumcised, you know, after they learned the truth. And there's nothing wrong with that. All right. It's a good thing. That's you know, that's our custom. However, let's let's say like Titus, you decide not to be circumcised. Does that mean the Heavenly Father can't deal with you and you're not going to get uh, uh, delivered? No. OK. It says, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, for it is evident the just shall live by faith. He's quoting Habakkuk. OK. And, 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 and that's ultimately what we're living by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Okay? 
See, the law was based upon being obedient to those laws, to those technicalities, all right, so that you could live, all right? But he, see, we're justified by faith, okay? In LT, this way of faith is very different from the law, way of the law, which says it is through obeying the law that a person has life. See? It's through faith that we have life. For Hamashiach has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. All of the curses of the nation fell on him. <clears throat> he paid the bill. See? For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. All right? When he was crucified. NLT. But Hamashiach has rescued uh, from us from the curse pronounced by the law. Now, Deacon Haka said, that isn't going to happen until he returns. No, that happened. First of all, it happened from the foundation of the earth, but it was sealed in on the earth when he was crucified. That blood, all right, covered, all right, the elect, okay, from being condemned by the curse of the law in this time. You see, he rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. The, the, the law says if you don't, if you work on the Sabbath, let's get an example. So the Exodus 34. Let's get a quick example of grace and how important it is. Okay. As a matter of fact, right here, uh, 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 Exodus 31 and 15. Six days may work be done. Speaking of the habit, the Sabbath. Okay. Let's start at 14. Exodus 31 and 14. Ye shall keep the Sabbath day. Therefore, for it is holy, separate unto you. Everyone that defileth this shall surely be put to death. All right? <laughs> for whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Now, you could say, well, you know, I don't work on the Sabbath. Not every believer has that luxury, though. Okay? So do you then start to condemn them that have to work on the Sabbath or do work on the Sabbath? And say they're, they're, they're cut off and they're going to be put to death just because you don't have to work on the Sabbath? Or you have a, a luxury of not? No, you don't do that. See, we're, we're, everybody's measure and everybody's story is different, man. And that's the beauty of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Okay, because even if you kept every Sabbath perfect since you uh, uh, were in the truth, you can be... Ultimately, uh, if you want to have that high-minded mindset, you can be judged by uh, the things you did before you knew the truth. You weren't keeping the Sabbath. Okay, six days may work be done, but in the seventh is a Sabbath of rest, holy unto the Lord. But you can have sex, right? Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day shall surely be put to death. That's a curse. See? Whereover the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. See that? But with Yahweh Shai's authority, with, with the Heavenly Father Simpton, he redeemed us from this curse. See that? And many other curses that came with not keeping that first covenant. Yahweh Shai redeemed us from it. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's get 1 Corinthians 9, one of my favorite. Or Hebrews 9. Hebrews chapter 9 and 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of a new testament, a new covenant that by means of death. All right. All right. He, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Who sinned under that first covenant? The Israelites. That they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. The promise that was given unto Abraham is the land where we will start at. Okay. We're going to return to that land starting at Jerusalem. All right. And departed under the 12 tribes as an inheritance under Yahweh Shai. Okay. The, 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 the 12 with David being the first king. All right, the uh, rest of the 144, the large multitude, and then from there we go throughout the whole earth. All right, but it starts at Jerusalem, okay, to the garden. All right, where we first messed up, starting with Adam. We're going to return there under the second Adam. Now it says here, 
Hamashiach have redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree all those curses were put up on him all right you don't have to do that you know you do have a sacrifice but you didn't have to do what Yahawashai did so you don't have no excuse it says that the blessing now Yahawashai did that okay that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Yahawashai that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The promise, all right, the immutable promise of the Spirit, all right, will come through faith. The blessing of Abraham will come upon the Gentiles. See, what Christians try to do is take away Isaac and Jacob. They take Isaac and Jacob out of that equation. Therefore, they can insert any nation they want. Okay. And the Gentiles are the Israelites who were likened unto Abraham. Why? Because Abraham was uncircumcised. Abraham was not circumcised till he was around 99 years old. Okay. Yet he was the friend of the Most High. Abraham was 90 years old, 99 when he was circumcised. Okay, and there you go. <laughs> and that's in Genesis, the 17th chapter, which is a very, very important chapter because look what the Lord told him. Genesis 17 and 19. And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him. For an everlasting covenant. Now, this is not talking about the covenant of circumcision. This is speaking of the covenant of the promise of the chosen and, and all of that. And with his seed after him. Now, who did that come through? Did it go through to Esau or did it go to Jacob? Jacob. As for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and made him fruitful and multiplied him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he begat and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, okay, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. See that? The covenant wasn't established with any other nation, all right, but with Abraham through Isaac who had Jacob and Esau, and it, it fell upon Jacob. Esau was put by. Though Esau and Ishmael were blessed, they were not blessed all right, with the promise of eternal life and inheritance of the Holy Land, where the government government of the kingdom of heaven, throne of David, will first be established. None of no other heathen, no heathen will partake in that. You see? But you have to go throughout the history to know the mystery. See? The blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. Because remember, it was told to Abraham, your seed shall be as the sand of the sea, as the stars of heaven. But we know through Isaiah, a remnant will return. Okay. And they will return from a Gentile state of mind. They will be in an uncircumcised uh, uh, state of mind. Some actually physically uncircumcised, but the Holy Spirit would fall upon them. And, and, and through faith, they would believe the message that they heard. Have that not happened to us? Okay, so here we go. Genesis, uh, Galatians 3 and 15. It says intent of the law. It gives you Genesis. All right. Is it right here? <laughs> Let's see here. Yep, Genesis uh, 12, 1 through 3, when the Lord was dealing with Abram before his name was changed to Abraham. So it says here, brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be a man's covenant. Yet, if it be confirmed, no man disannul it, nor add it thereto. But Vocab Malone and the Christian community constantly tried to disannul the covenant. You see? They, 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 they want to add to the covenant. They want to put this nation into it. They want to take it away from Israel. You, you, <laughs> you're going to lose. Now to Abraham. Let's read this in the NLT. Dear brothers and sisters, here 
here's an example from everyday life. Just as no one can set aside or amend an irre, ir, irrevocable okay, agreement, so it is in this case. Let's look up this word irrevocable right? so we can all be on the same page. Okay, you can't amend, you can't change an irrevocable agreement. Okay, and this is what the Christian church builds their whole mind, their, their whole doctrine is predicated upon amending the covenant. Okay, not able to be changed, reversed, recovered, final. It's also called immutable in uh, Hebrews, I believe. Yep, Hebrews 6 and 7, wherein God uh, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise. You see that? The heirs of the promise. All right? The, only the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob can be heirs to that promise because it was to him, it was to Abram and his seed, Isaac, his seed, Jacob, and his seed. No other nation. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things and that it was it was impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. You see that <laughs> the, the promise is immutable. It, was, it, it, it When the Lord told Abraham that he, he swore on his himself. It's immutable, unchangeable. But here it is. That's all Christians want to talk about when they come up to us because they don't understand the word heathen, Gentile. They don't know any history and they don't know the mystery. So they're trying to amend the ir irrevocable agreement and it don't work like that. It's a covenant, it's confirmed, and no man can disannul or add thereunto. Okay? The first covenant, which was eventually established with Moses, who was of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? And then you have the second covenant, all right, through Yahweh Shai. Verse 16 in Galatians 3 says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. All right, we just read which seed that was. That was through Isaac. And what's crazy about it, he, his faith was so high that when the Lord told him to sacrifice Isaac as a test, he was going to do it believing that Isaac can be raised from the dead because that was which the seed which that promise was going to go through. And then the Lord said, well, we'll sacrifice him. And, and Abraham's faith was so high as we read in Hebrews, he believed that Abraham, I mean, that Isaac would, would, would raise from the dead. That's how hardcore his faith was. Let me show you all that. Hebrews 11 and 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Now, we know Abraham had other children. Why is it calling Isaac his only begotten? Okay, that word only begotten, when you go into it, means a special one, the chosen one. Okay. It says of whom it was because we know he had eight children. So why is Isaac called the only begotten in the Holy Scriptures? OK, it says of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So here it is. The Lord told him in Isaac shall your seed be called. That's where the blessing and that's how this inheritance is going to be passed down. The Lord then said, well, we'll offer him up as a sacrifice. And Abraham's faith was so uh, 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 fervent that he said he would do it. Verse 19, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. All right. From whence also he received them in, in, in a figure. See? <laughs> and that's your Hawashai. Okay. NLT. 
Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. And that would be through Yahweh Shai. You see? Who who was raised from the dead. Okay? So this is this 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 book takes more than just reading and thinking you are gonna understand on on, on first face value. No, this this thing takes labor and study. You have to apply the history. One second here. Going back to Galatians. And we'll read through this. It says, Now to Abraham, It says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said, Not and to seeds. Ishmael wasn't a part of that. All right. Uh, the other children weren't a part of that. Okay. Midian wasn't a part of that. The other children who he had by the bond women, they weren't a part of that. The free woman. Okay. Which I have a lesson on that. <laughs> you know. Sarah. It says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made, and he said, Not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Okay? And Isaac was Yahweh Shai, for those who have ears to hear, but that's a whole nother lesson. All right? This book is way deeper than you people think. And you ain't going to be able to just open the book up at Matthew and think you're going to ignore the history and get it. No. Verse 17, I say in this, I say that the covenant which was confirmed before of the Most High and Hamashiach, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise none effect. All right. So we received the law as we uh, were exodus out of Egypt. But that doesn't take away from the fact that there was a promise already made to this seed. <laughs> you see? So the fact that we were disobedient to that covenant, the fact that we, you know, uh, uh, were divorced, that doesn't take away from the fact the Lord already promised this. From the foundation of the earth, we were chosen. So how are you going to be high minded in the law? Let's get that. Ephesians. Ephesians, the first chapter, and the first verse, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That was before the law was written on stone. We were already chosen and predestinated to be brought back, okay, to be adopted back to the Most High by Yahweh Shai, according to the pleasure of his goodwill. All right. So we're not a, a, a holy people and perfect by the law. We, we the, the, It's by predestination. So the law that was given by Moses, that first covenant, does not disannul the promise. Okay? Let's read this in the NLT. Galatians 3 and 17, NLT. This is what I'm trying to say. The agreement God made with Abraham could not be counseled 430 years Later, after when uh, later when God gave the law to Moses, God would be breaking His promise. Okay, so th th if if ultimately justification was through the law, we'd be out of there. The promise will be broke because it would no longer be a promise. It would be what through that law which we broke, so we'd be out of there. It says, "For an inheritance, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise." But God gave it to Abraham by promise. All right. He promised him that land. OK, which ultimately redeems us back to the land that Adam failed a right to uphold. OK, <laughs> back to the you know, we're going to get back to the land where Solomon built that temple. OK, and we we messed up. OK, so the water, Yahweh Ba'ashimi Shai for the promise now, there is a story, there is a movie that had to be played out, but don't get high-minded and, and, and to the point where you forget that this is, is a gift. 
Okay, then there was a promise already made before we received the laws on stone. The law was oral. That way was given unto this chosen seed before that. And the promises associated with that chosen seed was given before we got the law written on stone. All right. Verse 19. Wherefore then serve it the law? It was added because transgressions. All right. Till the seed should come. To whom the promises was made, it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Okay, let's read this in the NLT. Why then was the law given? Okay. It was given alongside the promise to show the people their sins. See, we had to, we had to see, we had to have it written on stone. Okay. So we can ultimately that we can be exposed all right, on how we really needed Yahweh Shai. OK, but the law was designed to last only until the coming of the child who was promised. OK, we're not going to be in the kingdom reading the law like, wait a minute. OK, so it says here not to do the no. It's going to be written in us and the child who was promised, which we can find throughout various scriptures is Yahweh Shai. God gave his law through the angel to Moses, who was the mediator between God and the people. Okay? And we failed. Not now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is then the law against the promises of God? No. God forbid. The law that we broke doesn't take away from the fact that there was something already promised to the seed. And see, this is what vocab says. Israel was cursed. They broke the law. Okay, the Israelites are that cursed olive tree who broke the laws and rejected Jesus or Yeshua. And now the Lord has cast away the, 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 the biblical Israelites. And now they've been replaced by actual heathen. All nations, it doesn't matter if you're a, a Jew, a Gentile, a Greek. See? But who was that promise made to? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 12 tribes so is the law against the promises no okay the Lord had a movie plan a script on how we will return God forbid for if the law had been if for if the law had been a uh, let me start over is the law therefore against the promises of God God forbid for if there had been a law given, which could have given life, all right, verily righteousness would have been by the law. You see that? The law brought death. The law exposed us that this flesh is no good. See, let's read this in the NLT. Is there a conflict then between God's law and God's promises? Absolutely not. Okay, the flesh is the issue. If the law could give us new life, we would be made right with God by obeying it. See that? No, we're made right with God through faith. All right, through cutting off uh, repentance, cutting off sin, the circumcision of the mind. That's why it says in Romans 2 and 29, but he is a Jew since the Jews were boasting in their outward works, their outward appearance. They're keeping of traditions. All right. Paul says, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart of the mind. I mean, you got to be right in your mind and in the spirit and not in the letter. Meaning that first covenant. OK, the, 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 the uh, technicalities, the laws. Whose praises is not of men, but of God. Got to be right with Yahweh Bashim Shai. OK, Galatians 3 and 22, but the scripture. Let's see. But the scripture have concluded all under sin. All right. That the promise by faith of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach might be given to them that believe. You see that? <laughs> so we all had to be, you know, pretty much labeled sinners. In this time as well, you know, 
and be brought back through the gift of what grace and faith. Okay, through Yahweh Shai, who sends us the Holy Spirit. Okay, before faith came, we were kept under the law. We were under that first covenant. Shut up to the faith, which should afterward be revealed. Okay, which comes through Yahweh Shai. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster. It was our guardian, pretty much, to bring us to Hamashiach, that we might be justified by faith. All right. As a matter of fact, the book of Second Ezra's one and thirty-five. All right. This is uh, through Ezra speaking into those who came up against the prophets. He says, "Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, which having, which not having heard of me, yet shall they believe me." All right. And that's us. Before we woke up, we didn't know too much about the Israelites. A few of us maybe did. We didn't know about the, the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh. You know, we were Christians. We didn't know nothing, whatever we were into. All right? But we believed when we heard the word. To whom I have showed no signs, yet they shall do what I have commanded them. That's the Gentiles. They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. Okay, now remember who sinned under that first covenant? The Israelites. Okay, their sins needed to be covered and redeemed. I take to witness the grace, <laughs> all right, of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice gl in gladness, and though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the thing that I say. That's us. Okay, we, we're operating on a high level of faith. That's what we're doing. And that's impressive to the Most High God, Yahweh through Yahweh Shai. Miracles and things like that are coming, but we, 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 we believe when a lot of these prophecies wasn't even really coming to pass yet. We believe, you know, our apostles and elders going back, they were, they were on fire and fervent for the word, never stopping through the the, the 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 70s 80s 90s america was all right <laughs> you see and we we've entered into their labors we didn't know what prophets were we didn't know what to look for when we saw it, we were like oh w wait a minute all right and we were justified by faith that's how the heavenly father wanted it to be done anyway let's finish this off in galatians 3 all right but after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. We're no longer under that first covenant, bro. Okay? You shouldn't have to go to the, the, to the law to understand not to be an alphabet or to understand not to eat particular things after you have learned this truth. Okay? It should be in you. All right? The, 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 the circumcision, the fringes are of the mind. You don't have to look at a dangling fringe to know I, I shouldn't do this it should be in you through fear of the lord that shows faith All right now again there's nothing wrong with fringes but to say if you don't have those on you're not right with the most high i'm better than you because i have mines on is off all right because you're not looking at those fringes to 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 know not to sin you're wearing them so that you can boast and that makes you a more of a transgressor at the end of the day because now you're going to be you're going to be judged by the technicalities of that first covenant if you want to be high minded like that okay so after faith has come we are no longer under a schoolmaster okay for ye are all children of God by faith in Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. See that? In the place it was said unto them, You're not my people, there shall it be said, You're the children of the Most High, but it's through Yahweh Shai. For as many of us as have been baptized into Hamashiach have put on Hamashiach. There is neither Jew nor Greek, okay? There is neither bond nor free, male nor female, but you are all one in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. You see that? And this is where Christians, they, they, 
Christians will, they don't, all of the history we just went through, all right, they're going to jump to verse 28 to say, Jew nor Greek, dude. Now, why is it Jew nor Greek? Because the Israelites under the Greek captivity became heathen. They, they took on to the customs of the Greeks. And this is why you need to watch this video. All right, I'll put the link in, in, in the description, Lord willing, I remember. But if not, check this out. And we always go into this, but this was good. I only watched a little bit of it, but I already know he's going to go in. Helen, that's what that word for uh, Greek is, Jew nor Greek, the circumcision or uncircumcision, basically, because our people became what? Hellenized. You see that word Helen? <clears throat> what is a Helen? Okay. Let's see here. Just to the point, Hellenization is adoption of Greek culture, religion, language, identity, all right, by non Greeks. Now, when you get first Maccabees, real quick. We'll be done. First Maccabees chapter one, as Antiochus and them came with their garbage. Okay. Verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and that everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Because they, they didn't just Hellenize only the, the Jews. They Hellenized all of the heathen as well as the Jews. But the Bible is following what happened with the chosen seed. And it says, yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profane the Sabbath. So there is neither Jew, the, those who were born of the circumcision, nor Helen. Those who took on these customs, you can be brought back in through faith. See, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Okay, and his blood was shed for the forgiveness of the sins of the Israelites. Acts 5 and 29 or 30. The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him had God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel in forgiveness of sins. Okay. Galatians 3 and 29. And if ye be Hamashiachs, then ye are Abraham's seed. That's the remnant accounted for the promise and our heirs according to the promise See that? What promise? The promise that was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? <laughs> Genesis 10, 21 and 10. Wherefore, she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even Isaac. <laughs> All right, verse 11, and the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son, because he cared. And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. And all that Sarah have said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. Sarah was on point. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now we're going to jump to Galatians 4 and 28. Now we brethren as Isaac was are the children of the promise through Jacob, okay, who had 12 sons, and Paul himself was of the tribe of Benjamin, one of the sons of Jacob, okay? But as, as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so is it now, okay? Okay? You have the heathen who were born after the flesh. They persecute us in our own people who were born after the flesh and not of the spirit. They persecute us. Nevertheless, what said the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, 
for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not the children of the bondwoman, but of the free, which was Sarah. Okay, Hagar, and I forget the other one's name. They were heathen women. They were concubines, all right? Uh, Sarah, all right, was the free woman, all right? She was of that chosen lineage. But ultimately, through the son she had, Isaac, the promise was forwarded, who had Jacob and Esau, and it was given to Jacob. So hopefully I will edify it. On to the next. Shalom.